good morning from Selchuk, Turkey. We are walking to the ancient Roman city of Ephesus today, and we're going to see one of the seven ancient wonders of the world. It's almost 7.30 in the morning, and the place opens up at eight. So we're trying our best to get there right as it opens. Just beyond the outskirts of town is the Temple of Artemis. It looks like we'll have to come back later. Off to Ephesus. My heart. There's a puppy next to the road. We always try to get to where we're going as early as possible so there's less people. But for Ephesus, we've heard that the tour buses get there at nine. So we should have about an hour with the place to ourselves, or close to. Our host told us that we could walk, and it is within walking distance. I think it was about a mile and a half. You should maybe rent a bike or take a taxi. It's not very uh, walker friendly. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> But you all know that we're cheap. If you're worried about getting breakfast before getting here, don't worry about it. They got all kinds of restaurants. Looks like they've also got a ton of shops with a lot of cute bags. Two tickets and a one audio guide. Our two tickets and an audio guide was 450 lira. We did buy a step up ticket. I think it gets us into a few more things. So this was not the cheapest option. Something about a terrace. We'll find out. Sometimes we like to splurge. <laughs> they are holding on to my passport, so we will have to return this audio guide, no matter what. Sand events too small to be held at the stadium were probably held at the gymnasium. This is massive. I have never seen ruins like this before. I mean, the closest thing I can think that compares is the Colosseum in Rome, which obviously is its own thing, but this is crazy. You can go up there and walk on this amphitheater. You can go up there. I know I was worried about getting here late. When am I not worried about anything? but there's hardly anyone around. Yeah, we've seen like a sprinkling of people. That's it. One thing we learned while researching Ephesus is you have to remember that all of this marble at the time of construction and when this was at its height, everything was pure white. Right now it looks like stone and rock, which is what it is. But when this was built, it was polished and beautiful. It was sparkly. This has been exposed for thousands of years. I cannot believe they just let people crawl over these. Like this feels so wrong, but I'm really happy that I get to do it. Let's see what the view looks like from the top. Excuse my breathing. Oh, made it. Well, not the tippy top, but this will do. Oh my goodness. Although this is known as a Roman ruin, this city was built by the Greeks originally and has been around since the 6th century BC. This was the second largest city in the Roman Empire and was once the most important Greek city and trading center in the entire Mediterranean. This is where East met West. The trading routes all came through here. This city was important before they decided to build 
Constantinople, or what is modern day Istanbul. This was it. This was the center. Istanbul didn't exist yet. This is the Library of Celsus. It was the third largest library in the ancient world. I've never seen nearly this much Greek writing that's perfectly intact, it seems, and the detail in the marble. Like, I've never seen such chiseled marble. Chiseled, but like you said, intact, uneroded. Yeah. This, this, is, this is amazing. There's like flowery designs that are uh -huh. still very visible. Some of these statues are not original. They are mm -hmm. in museums. Uh, it seems like around the world. Is However, <laughs> no, I think one was in Vienna and some are in Istanbul. Okay, interesting. Including some of the original books. Wow. Moving on. This was the central market of the entire city. I've never seen one of these in a Roman ruin. The way they got all of the marble chunks to hold together as they stacked them, they literally just used wood. They jammed wood in there and that's how it stayed sturdy. Here come the tourists. Glad we got here when we did. Oh my goodness. The tour buses definitely get here at 9 a.m. Well, I'm glad we saw what we did when we did. But uh, all of that nice emptiness ends now. Thanks to this wonderful guide back here, we overheard this was the public men's restroom and it actually had running water underneath, so the stink didn't really sit around and stay. Since the stink didn't sit around, they sat around and socialized. Yeah, he said people would stay up for two hours. <laughs> and then to clean themselves, they would take a sponge, clean themselves, rinse it off in the water, clean it again, and either throw it away or put it in their pocket for next time. I did overhear that they very specifically had one hand for shaking and greeting and eating, and the other one was to clean up and do your business. That was very important at that time. We didn't know what the extra part on our ticket was that we paid for. It's to the terrace houses. You're inside, you're shaded, and if you don't buy it up front, it's an extra 65 when you get here. never been in a place like this and why nobody else is in here I'm not gonna say that this audio guide isn't worth it but there's lots to read on all the signs this gives a lot of additional information and if you're here with all the tours just kind of stand by them and listen you don't really have a choice in the matter they obviously cared about how it looked they appreciated it it's so pretty much of what is still here is only intact because it was buried, it was covered up and protected from the elements. So this ceiling, this is like an outdoor museum and it protects it. And this is one of the coolest Roman ruins I've seen anywhere. This is amazing. It feels like you're walking through an old neighborhood. I haven't seen painted decorated walls like this anywhere except for Pompeii in Italy. The amount of time and manpower it would require to construct something like this at the time that it was constructed, I, I can't wrap my head around it. It was worth coming here just to see this. This was something special, I feel like. It's well preserved. You can see mm -hmm. all the rooms, the mosaics, the paintings on the wall. That was very impressive. A 
long time ago, this would have been the main road in and out of town. This was lined with all sorts of markets and people, it's hard to imagine, but that's what it is and that's what it was. Much of what you see around you, anything that is stood up, is not exactly original. They found it all tumbled over and rebuilt it to make it look as good as it does today. This main road had all the merchants on it, but it would have gone all the way to the harbor, connecting the harbor to the center of the city. A harbor that they had to dredge and remake several times throughout its history because all of the silt filled it in and then they actually had to move the city. We just heard a tour guide try to tell a joke to the people on the tour and there was a carving of a man that looked like he was playing a guitar. And the tour guide asked, do you guys know what this means? And they said, no. He said, this is Michael Jackson playing the guitar. And the people on the tour said, but Michael Jackson didn't play a guitar. <laughs> he probably tells that joke every single day, every week, and I wonder if anybody else has ever said that. That's it's true, I mean. Michael Jackson didn't play the guitar. <laughs> This is what remains of the Church of Mary. This was the very first church ever built in her honor. This entire place is the Church of Mary. Looks like it was huge at one point in time. It's believed that Apostle Paul was here for about two years and people gathered to hate on Paul because he hated on Artemis, who was at the time the goddess that was worshiped here. So you have a new religion speaking badly about the old religion and the town rioted in the theater back in the city. I've also learned that the Gospel of St. John was written right here in this city. It's time to get my passport back. We've had a lot of fun here in the archaeological site, but the city of Ephesus is so much bigger than what is here. Outside of it, there's still some locations that you have to see. One of those is the Temple of Artemis, and that's where we're going to go next. Thank you. Thank you. This parking lot sure filled up. Oh yeah. As far as Roman ruins go, this city was great. It wasn't as big as I was expecting. There's a lot to see in a small amount of space. Everybody comes here to go into the library wall, which is magnificent and amazing, but to us, you have to go see the terrace houses. The terrace houses, in my opinion, is what sets this site apart from all of the other ones. I think it's kind of funny that Ephesus has this grand entrance you have to pay to get in, the security, it's bathrooms, the whole nine yards. Well, the Temple of Artemis, one of the ancient wonders of the world, it's just like this alleyway with an unassuming gate, the sign is all grown over, like there's nothing really here. And the best part about that is the reason Ephesus became what it was was because of the temple that we're about to see. All right, people, the moment you've all been waiting on, the number one ancient wonder of the world. That's it. That's all that's left of the Temple of Artemis. And all her glory. Artemis was the goddess of fertility, and she was worshiped so strongly that people from all over the world would come here to see this temple and worship her. For me, the most fascinating fact about the entire construction of the Temple of Artemis is that it was built on a fault line and on top of a marsh. So it was built with two different foundations. The first was made of charcoal and then sheep's wool. And then after that, they laid down another harder, more concrete marble foundation. And that's what you kind of see today. The charcoal and the sheep's wool is what was supposed to mop up some of that wetness. That's crazy. This is the first temple ever completely made of marble. It was brought in from eight miles away and they estimate that it was about 51,000 tons of marble. As Amber mentioned earlier, this temple was built on a marsh. That marsh is still swallowing what's left of the temple to this day. According to the list of the seven ancient wonders of the world, the Temple of Artemis was the biggest and most impressive to see at that time period. This was over twice the size of the one at the Parthenon in Athens, Greece. 
the only other site or structure still intact from that list is the pyramids in Giza. Otherwise, this is it. This is all that remains. Kind of impressive when you think about it. Then again, I think this is why it's kind of ignored by most tourists. They don't understand and appreciate why there's such little that remains. I think it's really interesting that we don't even know what this temple would have looked like back in the day. The best drawings or guests that we have were based on artists from the Renaissance period. Two hundred years after its construction, the temple was destroyed by a fire. It was rebuilt, lasted another six hundred years, and then was brought down by an earthquake. I think Nathan's had enough. I'm hungry. Me too. It's 12 o'clock. We accomplished everything in, well, four hours. <laughs> I guess that's it not that be. fast. Yeah. I truly hope you guys are not sick of seeing ancient ruins. Coming up in our next video, we're gonna go see the oldest structure ever built by man. The oldest on this earth that we know of. Flashback to running the bleachers in high school 10 to 15 years ago. Oh my goodness.